Hey, what's going on guys? Pat here at All Day I Eat Like a Shark, where I share my Japanese cooking videos once a week, showing you how to make Japanese food. If you are wondering what we're gonna be making today, I have all of my ingredients ready to go. And I have a very large bag of kasu. This is also known as sake lees. These are the leftover goods from sake production. Uh, it's a very useful ingredient if you like to cook fish as well as meat, or if you like to bake. And I've even used this for ice cream. So kasu ice cream, uh, kasu bread, kasu cake, uh, kasu fish, kasu zuke is what we're gonna be making today. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing for more videos like this one. So kasuzuke, if you've never heard of it before, is literally kasu and then stuck to something. So tsuke or tsukeru means to stick something or to season it in this case. Um, I have a, about two pounds of black cod here. These are already filleted, easy to use. Thank you, Whole Foods. I have all of my ingredients ready to go that we're gonna be using for the marinade. So I have a cup of kasu, uh, about a quarter cup of sake, five tablespoons of mirin, a quarter cup of miso, red miso, quarter cup of water. I have some salt, which we're gonna be using for the fish, as well as two tablespoons of white sugar and two tablespoons of brown sugar. So that's gonna be our marinade. Uh, what we're gonna do with the salt is we're gonna salt the fish to get out any of the uh, yucky fishy flavor and fishy odor. Um, that helps to also improve the texture, uh, as well as the, it allows the marinade to penetrate better. So it does several things. You can see I have all of my uh, fillets here. And we're gonna let this sit salted for about 30 minutes. I'm gonna get this out, it's a little bit moist. And so there's three fillets here. I'm actually gonna cut these so that they're a little bit smaller. If you've never used black cod before, it's a very delicious fish, it's very fatty. It's uh, similar to butterfish, if you've had butterfish. And it's one of my favorites. So whatever uh, seasoning that you're using, such as the marinade for the, that we're using today, will be very well absorbed by the fish and you'll end up with a very good flavor. Okay, so there's three pieces. So this is about a one and a half pounds, like I mentioned. Depending on how much fish you like, I usually do a pretty big batch, at least two pounds per round. And I freeze the rest because it freezes well. And uh, this is one of my favorite ways to prepare fish. So my other favorite ways to prepare fish are just plain salt, um, shioyaki, as well as misoyaki, which is a miso marinade. Very similar to this, but miso flavor, obviously. You can use it for uh, salmon, you can use it for mackerel, as well as black cod. Uh, those are some of my favorites. You can use it for yellowtail as well, um, or buri in Japanese, that's what it's called. So for these uh, fish pieces that I'm cutting into, you, you wanna, you can do it any size that you want, but I do medium pieces, so about one serving for one person. So this is about maybe three to four inches uh, wide by uh, maybe two to three inches long. It's about one serving. And the good thing about this marinade, if I didn't mention it already, is that you can use it uh, at least twice. I'd recommend using it no more than twice, uh, especially if you're using it for fish the first time, it's gonna get a little bit fishy um, after the second time. You might notice it even with the uh, with the second time. So just keep that in mind if you're planning to reuse it. So what I'm gonna do now is just salt both sides of the fillets generously. And this is a technique that you can apply to any fish recipe. Gets out the uh, fishy flavors, the odors, and it improves the texture because it's drawing out moisture from the flesh. And then you're gonna replace it with the uh, the marinade, which will be better absorbed since there's less moisture. So in general, uh, you wanna use about 1% of the uh, weight of the fish in salt. So if you're doing like a kilo of fish, which is 2.2 pounds, you wanna do 1% of a kilo, which is 10, 10 grams, 10 grams, since there's a thousand grams in a kilo. So you wanna do both sides as well, since there's, you know, the fishy flavors on both sides of the fish, it's not just one side. And you can let this sit overnight in the fridge, or you can just do it for 30 minutes to an hour if you're in a rush, that's what we're gonna be doing today. And meanwhile, while this is going, I'm just gonna go ahead and mix all the ingredients for the marinade, 
And once this is done uh, marinating with the salt, we're gonna go ahead and combine it all into this Tupperware I have right here. And we're gonna let everything sit for about three days. So this does take a little bit of time. You need to wait at least three days, up to five days. I wouldn't really recommend going beyond five days. Um, the flavor doesn't really get that much better at that point. So if you're not gonna be cooking it right away, uh, broiling it, I would recommend that you wipe off the excess marinade and then freeze the fish. So question of the day, have you ever eaten or made katsuzuke before? If you have, let me know in the comments below. Would love to hear your experiences. It's not something that I've ever seen served in an American restaurant. I have seen it in Japan, in Japanese restaurants, especially if you go to like a fish, uh, fish restaurant. Um, they, they usually, they might have it, but they may not have it. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is something that you're gonna have to make at home. Most Japanese markets do sell some sort of kasu. I've seen, you know, really large bags like the one that I have here. This is probably lasting me about a year or so. So I'll need to get some more. This is a really big bag. Um, some, some, some markets might sell a smaller bag, uh, but you really don't need too much. Uh, like I said, we're using a pretty big amount. And so that's why we're using a cup of kasu today. And uh, you can use it for many things. So if you've never used it, it's one of those uh, very, I guess, I don't know if you'd really call it esoteric. It's pretty common in Japan, but not so much in the US, I guess. Maybe it's an acquired taste. Maybe that's one of the reasons why it's not so popular, or maybe just people don't know about it. I don't know. We're gonna go ahead and combine everything in here. So there's the five tablespoons of mirin, quarter cup of sake, uh, quarter cup of water, and then, uh, whoa, almost dropped that. The uh, sugar, I like to make uh, a few modifications, sometimes I'll use all white sugar, sometimes I'll use all brown sugar for a little bit of a different flavor profile, as well as uh, modify the type of miso that I'm using. So today we're doing red miso. This is rice miso, kome miso, which is made with rice. You can also use barley miso, which is made with barley, a uh, combination of the two, or you can do uh, white miso, which is a sweeter miso. If I use white miso, or saikyo miso, for example, which is a little bit sweeter than the red miso, I might cut back, cut back on the sugar a little bit, maybe like a half tablespoon to a tablespoon, um, just so that it's not too sweet because I don't really like my marinades that sweet. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna use my immersion blender and we're gonna blend everything together. Let me get the uh, miso out there. All right, so there's that. And then we're just gonna make sure everything's incorporated and then we'll drop it in here and then we'll add the fish and then all the hard work is done. All, we're gonna, all that we're gonna need to do next is broil the fish. So let's go ahead and get this going. If you don't have an immersion blender, you can use a food processor or a regular blender. You can use a fork too. It's a little bit more work obviously than using the immersion blender. Uh, but you wanna make sure everything is well mixed together. You don't want any chunks of sugar or chunks of miso. It's gonna mess with the flavor. And looks like I spilled some, get that back in there. And then we'll drop everything into this plastic ware, and this will be ready for our fish. So make sure to at least use it twice. Uh, use it for salmon. That's easier to find than black cod. I like to use my uh, marinades for, with fatty salmon, so like Copper River salmon when that's in season, uh, or king salmon, both of which are very fatty. As soon as this sits for about 30 minutes. We'll go ahead and drop it in there. Let it marinate for about three to five days. Like I mentioned, three days is the minimum. So don't take it up before then. Otherwise that's not gonna taste as good as it should. Key point there. Go ahead and drop in the uh, kasu marinade that we made. Kasu doko is what it's called, which is the uh, the marinade. Miso doko is the miso marinade if you're doing a miso zuke. So gindara is black cod in Japanese and uh, kasu zuke is what we're making today. So hope you guys give this a chance and uh, I will see you back in about half an hour after this is done. Uh, getting salted. Oh, he's Sashiburi, long time no see. Just kidding, you probably saw me a few seconds ago. Thanks to the magic of video, we fast forwarded in, in time about 30 minutes. We're just gonna go ahead and drop it all in here. It's been three days time. Think I would have grown a beard? Maybe, maybe not. I actually tried to grow a beard before, but my facial hair is not dense enough, unfortunately. So it's very, uh, it's a very weak gene that I inherited there, facial hair wise. <laughs> All right guys, so that's pretty much it. I'm gonna have to stick this in the fridge for three days and get some kasuzuka in my diet. It's gonna be delicious, can't wait, and uh, I will see you then. So guys, it's been about uh, five days and my kasuzuka is just about done marinating. What I'm gonna do now is prepare a baking sheet with a wire rack 
We're gonna put a little bit of cooking oil. You can also use medium. That'll help to prevent anything from sticking to the rack. And then we're gonna broil the fish for about three to four minutes. And if you're not using your rack, you may wanna flip it over. That way one side won't get all like moist and uh, soaked and uh, unpleasant in texture. Before you put any fish onto the uh, grilling rack, you wanna make sure that you wipe off as much of the marinade as possible. So use a spatula as well as a as my finger. And at this point, if you're not gonna cook it, just freeze it. And it'll taste just as good after you thaw it when you broil it at the time that you broil it. All right, so here's two meals for two people, and then here's another two meals for, or one meal per person for two people, right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick these into the uh, fridge, and then that's gonna be pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and check on my uh, broiling fish for in a minute. I should check on it right now. Not quite done yet, a few more minutes. All right guys, so I think my uh, fish is just about done. We're gonna go ahead and take it out of the broiler. Got a beautiful brown on the uh, edges in the corners, just like you would want. And uh, the bottom should be nicely uh, cut, cooked as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on a plate. That's a miso shiru here, miso soup. So there's one piece. And another piece. I'm gonna go ahead and set this little shiso leaf there for some color accents. So this is my kasuzuke with gindara, gindara kasuzuke, or black cod. It's very fatty, very delicious, especially with kasu. Like I mentioned, you can use this for all kinds of different fish, including salmon or uh, yellowtail, or two of my favorites. You can also use akauo, which is red perch, another fatty fish, maybe even sea bass. If this is your first time broiling the fish, some tips would be to watch it closely so you don't burn it as you notice that there is a little bit of uh, charring going on. Ideally, you would have, you know, just brown, but uh, sometimes the marinade is left over and I'll just, you know, it'll come right off, so it's no big deal. Make sure to salt your fish ahead of time before you actually marinate it. That helps to improve the texture. It'll dehydrate the flesh a little bit. Also, it'll allow the, the marinade to penetrate the fish better so that you end up with a better flavor. And it'll also help to decrease the fishy flavor and odor. So it does multiple things there for you. Yeah, all you need to uh, eat with this is some rice. Some miso soup like I have here, maybe some vegetables. I don't know what I'm gonna eat yet, but uh, I'll figure that out. That's my kasuzuke for you. So let me know if you have any questions or comments in the uh, area below. And question of the day, have you ever tried using sak uh, kasu or sake leis uh, for your cooking, baking, or uh, sweets? Let me know in the comments below as well. And uh, that's gonna be pretty much it for today. And thanks for watching. I will see you in my next video. See ya. Mmm, this is so bomb, so bomb. I hate these little bones. There's always these little bones. I don't know if you could see them or not. It's almost like a bone mohawk in the uh, filet. Even though they, I got these filleted already and cleaned, it still has the bones in them. If you don't want the bones, you need to uh, debone them with like a tweezer. It's a lot of work, so I never do it. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I don't. All right guys, see ya.